Some described this week as a fast moving train in terms of moving toward a COVID-19 vaccine for younger children. An FDA panel endorsed the Pfizer vaccine for those 5 to 11 years old. Today, Paula Tutman talks with the University of Michigan virologist who sits on that panel and brings us an inside look at the pressure they felt and what she says parents really need to know. A high jump over the first regulatory hurdle for the Pfizer vaccine for children between the ages of 5 and 11. Right now, we're saying that this should be available for parents and the children who want to get vaccinated. Dr. Ovita Fuller, who sits on the FDA advisory panel for the COVID vaccine, tells me that this has been one of the more dramatic, stressful weeks for the panel. Start with a well-coordinated email campaign to try to pressure panel members to vote no on the vaccine for younger children. There were 64,000 emails as of Friday afternoon. Things like, I'm praying for you, to things like, do the right thing, to you don't dare put this poison in people's arms. And I'm like, this is, I, I don't understand this. It, it made me very sad. Again, remember, we're watching sausage being made like never before. Few people paid attention to this very same process when it came to vaccines for polio, rubella, measles, and chickenpox. Those were common childhood illnesses that vaccines have helped us to live longer. Our, our lifespan is highly increased because of vaccines. But with people micro-focused on things they're not necessarily trained to understand. Let's just be real, it was politicized from the very beginning. So it's unfortunate that we're having to deal with such life-saving issues in the middle of a politicized world at the moment but that's where we are. Dr. Fuller says at the end of the day, if your child is between the ages of five and 11, it's a good idea to get them the shot. And if you're not sure, speak to your pediatrician. The Pfizer child dose is a fraction of the adult dose. And if your child is 11 and a half or 11 and eight months, go ahead and get whatever it is at the official age I am at the time, as opposed to wait to get the bigger dose because um, the data showed that a 10 microgram amount was as protective as the 20 microgram amount. And of course, the big topic has also been that potential risk of heart inflammation called myocarditis. Myocarditis occurs more so in people who have not been vaccinated as just a classic myocarditis. And it does not last, so we know how to look for it and we know how to handle it. Whereas there's so many things with COVID that we don't understand and we don't know who gets what, why. You know, having access to Dr. Fuller really gives us a unique insider's view of how these decisions are being made and what's important about them. An interesting poll says 33% of parents say in terms of getting their kids vaccinated, they're going to kind of wait and see. And Dr. Fuller, Karen, actually reminded me she was part of that 33% in the early days of talking about the adult vaccination, but she waited for the science. She waited to see what the data said. And now she's completely on board. She says the same is for children. I do want to tell you what I'm working on uh, for 530 because there's still, of course, a lot of confusion over boosters, mixing and matching. Again, that insider's view of whether or not it's a good idea and, and why you should really think about getting that booster, Karen. In obviously, we really do appreciate that insider's perspective. We appreciate it. We'll be checking back with you later. Thank you, Paula.